Grab your Chippewa. And your Chippewa. Today we are going to do a Bible study, which we do every day. And today we're going to be in Psalms chapter 139 and verse 13. And we're going to talk about the unique you because a lot of people, when they try and be someone that they're not, right. find themselves constantly stuck in life. But when you actually be, become, identify and value who you really are right. and your unique self, you find yourself unstuck and moving forward. We're going to talk more about it. Good morning. Welcome to Wake Up. Where we wake up. I'm Pastor Scott. I'm Pastor Jason. It's good to have you with us today. We're looking good today. we got a great show for you. we got a scripture today. We're going to pray over your day. And at the end, we got our survey, Survey Thursdays. We're going to yep. have fun with that. Yep. And if you're a new subscriber, go to, or actually everybody should go to wakeuptv.tv and register. And we will text you every morning or once a week the link to the new episode. And that's kind of cool. You just go, boop. Yeah. You wake up in the morning. It's right there. It reminds you. You hit it's, it. It's like subscribing squared. It's like subscribing 2.0. <laughs> and if you're a new subscriber, type in where you're from. We'd like to read that on Wednesdays. But let's get into the scripture today. First, let's watch this clip. That purpose is revealed through movement. That when we move in life, right, purpose is revealed to you and I. And I like to see, I think God gave me this picture, that our lives are be like a river. That a river just goes and it moves through. And when it moves, like it's, it's cutting into the unmovable, the, the unshapeable stuff. You make the Grand Canyon by just continuing to move. The things that seem impossible, I just keep moving through it. And I bring beauty and I bring change. I was, I was thinking about that. I bring life. I don't know why they cut it off there because I did have more, <laughs> more yeah. things it, it continues to bring. Like you bring it was, life. It was just boring. I know. I got, it got old. <laughs> and they're like, well. We could I'm kidding. Just... It was not boring. <laughs> Like that That's is, what you say to me, though, yeah, when they short my clip. Like the, the, the show is, yeah, it's not <laughs> boring. No, no, no. When I drive between here and Payson, you, you know, you we're driving through the desert. There's this little spot where all of a sudden it's lush and green. Everything else is brown. Right. Up in the mountains is brown. It's like brown. Yeah. It's desert. It's an orange desert, right? Yeah. So, But then uh, there's this little spot off to the right as you're passing where it's like all this lush green trees and all this green. If you really kind of stop and look down in there, it's because there's a little creek running through there. And that's what you're designed to do. You're designed to bring life. Yeah. You're like a river. And that's what purpose is revealed as mm -hmm. I go through, as I'm cutting, mm -hmm. I'm doing, I'm changing, I'm bringing life. But when you're not moving, you become stagnant. And one of the things you talked about in your message as you, as you dug in was that, that unique you that you shouldn't try and be someone you're not. If, when, it comes, you. when it comes to purpose, a lot of times we look at what other people are doing and we decide that's what we want to do. Right. And we look at how other people are and we decide that's who we want to be. And, and we look at the comparisons on social media and we say, well, that's the marriage I want. Right. That's the life I want. That's the family I want. Why is everybody smiling and so happy? And <laughs> hashtag family fun. Now that's really one of the things that a lot of people like were really moved by that part is that they try to, that, that their family is trying to be another family rather than just be their family. Just be your family. Be so you. Be your marriage. Be your Let marriage. your marriage be your marriage. Yeah, they go out and they do the fancy meals and that's what they enjoy doing. Right? But maybe your family and you and your wife enjoy doing this. Mm -hmm. So why are you trying to do something you don't enjoy, trying to make your marriage be something that isn't what your marriage is? Psalms 139 says this in verse 13. For you formed my inward parts. Right? God made the inside of you. Right. He planned the inside of you. The inside of you, I'm not talking about like your liver. I'm talking about like <laughs> your, your, your desires, your gifts, your dreams, your talents, your, your soul, your emotions, your, the way you think, the... The opinions you have, the foods you like, the, the, the secret, hidden, inward things of you, like the way you were built. Yeah. And, and you covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you for I am fearfully, wonderfully made. When he made the inside of you, he did it with skill. Right. He gave you everything that you would need. And he goes on to say, and my soul knows very well, my frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret, skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed, and in your book they are all written, the days fashioned for me when as yet there were none of them. In other words, God knows your story before you started your story, and he put everything on the inside of you and skillfully made you to have everything you would need to live your story with success. And he said, and I like this, I like how, he, I love how David talks, he goes, marvelous are your works. Mm. That's third person. <laughs> <laughs> right? I, I look in the mirror and Holly... Sounds there. arrogant, the way he's talking about No, I about love himself. to do that when I'm in the morning. I'm getting ready and Holly... I know she's kind of listening over there. I'm like, God, you're so handsome. Why did God make you so handsome? I mean, this is unbelievable. My it's, wife is so lucky to have that. Oh, my God. And she goes, knock it off. 
Well, imagine if you, if, you, if you painted something and you really took your time and you were a skillful painter and you painted a beautiful masterpiece, but let's say that your, your masterpiece had a voice and right. your painting when it was all finished goes, yeah, I'm awful. I'm ugly. Right. I'm not. I wish I was the Mona I wish Lisa. I were the, yeah, I wish I were the bigger paint, painting. I'm too yeah. small and, and you, I don't even like these colors. And, and that, that you would feel insulted that the creation that you made was, was kind of insulting you by insulting itself. And when we insult ourselves, or we carry around the long, wrong labels, and we carry around failure with us, and defeat with us, and we believe what other people have painted us with, and it tries to cause us to try and be someone we're not, what happens is, is in some ways or another, you're insulting the Creator. Right. And so David's complimenting the Creator. He's like, man, look at me. This is hot. <laughs> I love saying this is I am so made good. wonderfully. I, I got marvelous. everything on the, I'm t I don't need somebody else's gifts. I got all the gifts I need. I got all the talents I need. I got all the dreams I need. I got all the right desires in me. It, it, it's so powerful. powerful. And I want you to know this. When you insult the creation, you insult the creator. Yeah. And so, like, when you make fun. So I'll build something, like, I've many times. Well, I'm done building stuff because it's not my gift. But Holly will come in, and, she, and I'm like, ta-da! And she'll look, and she'll go, so, so you're done? <laughs> and I always got to go, no, no. I got, Almost. No, like yeah, it's a rough draft. Like if, if you were finishing it, what more would you do to it? She's like, well, I wouldn't do any of that. <laughs> but you just pointed to all of it. Right? Yes. And so when she makes fun of the creation, it hurts the creator's heart. Yeah, yeah. It and it the hurts. same thing for you when, when we talk bad about ourselves. Yeah. Like God gave you great things and ability. He gave to nobody else. And as Jason was kind of bearing out there, is don't be John. You're not a great John. I'm a great Scott. I'm a horrible John. Yeah. Right? I'm a horrible, uh, right, this person or that person. And people say that about both of our teachings. I believe they come and they go, you're one of, you're, you're different than any other pastor I've ever listened to. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, thank you. Nobody can be a better you than you. You are the best you that's ever lived on the planet. But when you try and be Ted or you try and be Martha or try and be someone else, you're, they're, you're, you can't. You've left the best you, the, the one that there's no one better than. And so it's better for us to just really accept who God created us to be, what He put on the inside of us, and just be the best us that we can be. Avoid comparisons at all costs, and, and, and be happy with who God made you to be. And I think a lot of times people don't know who God made them to be. Right. We take on whatever the people say, and we think that's who we are. And I think that one of the things that reveals who you are is falling in love with yourself. Not pride, but falling in love with yourself. Mm -hmm. And there's something that I, I began a journey from a message I heard back in the ninth grade. Uh, because, you know, you grow up and the devil knows, he starts early of making fun of you, right? Everyone, the, what, what happens when you go to school? All of a sudden, everything that's wrong with you. And even people that everything is right. We had a girl, she, was, she looked like Barbie. So everybody called her Barbie doll. And so that was hurtful to her. <laughs> She's... She's perfect. Yeah. And so now we're going to make fun of her perfection. Well, it was the 80s. That's what she did. She just put people down. And so we grew up through that. And people still do it. My kids are telling me that people still, this, wow. is, this is normal. They still will find something because the devil knows that if he can make fun of the Mona Lisa smile long enough, she'll no longer like her smile. Yeah. So I began on a journey of, of self-talk. And I think this is important going into 23, 23, and you should try this, is just fall in love with you. Like, I love me. I love Scotty. My, your inner voice. See, David had his inner voice is speaking, marvelous are your works. Yeah. This is great. God, you, we, you, know, you we, gave me everything that I need. And when I begin to fall in love with who I am, I become thankful for the things that God gave me. And we even, even label that like it's bad. We'll say, we'll use the word narcissism. When narcissism is when you're all about self and selfishness. Right. So this is not a, an ungodly trait, what he's talking about is that I might come into agreement with what God says about me on, the in, on my inner voice. Mm -hmm. That my inner voice begins to say, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I've been given everything that I need for life and godliness. I am brilliant. I have the mind of Christ. I am strong and I'm well able. What am I oh, doing? I'm on, saying Jason. what God says about me. I'm oh, in agreement. That. I'm not being arrogant. That, that, that's good self-talk. It's, it's learning how to, like David did, uh, believe in what God made. Arrogance is, I believe I'm better than you. Oh, that's good. Right? That's arrogant. I'm ar I believe I'm better than you. No, I don't believe I'm better than you. Yeah. But I, I'm as good in my own way as you are. We all are great, can be great. I, we all have gifts and talents. I don't you have might, to be envious of you. You might be a wide receiver on the team of life, and you have speed, and that's your gift. And I might be a lineman, and I'm just strong. At it. And the thing is, is I shouldn't try to be a wide receiver and think I'm better. No, we need you on the team. I need. We all need to be on the team. Mm -hmm. 
We all have our own gifts and talents. I need to be great at what God gave me my gifts and talents are, not desiring to be like your gifts and talents. Mm -hmm. And this is where it is, is just fall in love with your gifts and talents. I'm great at math, just the way I am. I'm funny, it's just things that I have. These are my gifts. I'm super high. You know, it's hard to be this good looking all the time. It's It's very difficult. It's hard to sit next to someone that good looking. Right? It's very difficult to walk down the street and have everyone want to be I have to always be second best. I have to always have the second best voice, the second best look. You got a better voice. You got better looks. It's never enough. It's never enough. (laughs) It's never enough. I was pray, teasing about that. You know, let's let's be let's be generous. Uh, if you receive something today, let's be a generous people. We encourage you to partner with us and help us get this word out to more people. And be a giver. You can go to how do they do it? WakeUpTV.tv and click the give button, right? Yeah, the WakeUpTV.tv is the easiest uh, way to give. Is that how they do it? Okay. And uh, we encourage you to be givers. Every dollar that, if you give a dollar an episode, it really, you'd be surprised at how many people we can reach with a, a dollar. Mm-hmm. I think it's like a thousand people. A dollar equals a thousand reaches. Amen. And uh, so we encourage you to be a giver. And uh, you want to pray? Yeah. Lord, I just thank you, Lord, for your hand of blessing on everybody's life. We thank you, Lord, for the words that you spoke over us and that your word matters and that your word creates energy and it creates a way where there is no way. Some of us are facing tough things today. I thank you, Lord, that that you are making the crooked places straight. Mm, That's so good. That you are leveling the mountains in the name of Jesus and that we walk out with a boldness, Father God. And that we walk out also with kindness in our heart, Lord, towards others. And that we might see the good in things and we might say the good about the things we see. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. This weekend, we got Wake Up Survey. Oh. Thursday, survey Thursday. Yep. So we, we wanted to find out about New Year's resolutions. So I like this comment. New Year's resolution. I resolved to cancel the gym membership I got last January. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's hard to do, actually, canceling a gym membership. Do you make New Year's make resolutions? Uh, 50, now, we're, I, I tell you what. 20 years ago, that number would be very different. Oh, yeah. Everybody made New Year's resolutions. We all talked about them. That's, uh, saying 55% on... of people said they did not make any, and I didn't make any. None. Yes, said 10%, sometimes 25%. Interesting. I, you know what's funny is I, I don't call them a resolution, but I, I always do this. I do it like December. I go, all right, I'm not riding my Peloton. I'm not exercising like I should, and I'm, I'm not. Uh, I've been eating really good, but I'm like, I'm going to start juicing. So I, I may, I'm like, I'm going to start juicing. And today was the first day I juiced in this month. Okay, but you stuck to it. <laughs> Not really. If you I make a new better. resolution, do you keep it? 75% said no. No, that's probably why people get discouraged. They're like, I'm not, even gonna ma- yes. I'm not even going to make them. Sometimes 15%. And I believe the only change that really sticks is the change that God does on the inside of us. Right. And we, we all can attest to that, I'm sure. Lightning round. If you make a New Year's resolution, how long do you keep it? 50% said, I already forgot. <laughs> 10% all year, 15% a month, 25%. <laughs> A week. That sounds about right. I like, you know what I like better than uh, uh, New Year's is a daily resolution. And I, I think it's self-awareness. Mm-hmm. And I believe, yes, of course, God changes this. But I think that you got to keep it in the forefront of your mind of every day going, I can be better at that. Mm-hmm. I like to do that. Like every, I'm like, I could be, I'll be better at that tomorrow. I leave and notes I for w- myself. Do you really? Yeah, if I really want to change something, I'm serious. I'll leave a little sticky notes to remind me every day. So I'll see the sticky and I'll go, yep, that's what I'm doing today. I really like that a lot. Yeah. And when I, and if I dig in, I do have a lot of stuff. Like you know, in August, I said no more, no more soda. Done. I haven't had, I haven't had a soda. It's done because well, I was, I wanted to be healthier. Soda, soda was deteriorating I've, this I've body. I've not drank a soda in forever. Twenty five years. Now I do get this. Now I'm gonna tell but you. This. I shouldn't say that. I've had sips. On the on the fishing trip, <laughs> I'm gonna have an A and W root beer. That's my reward okay. once a year. Okay. I have A and W root beer. Yeah. But other than that, this body. And I was at YC's yesterday, and there's nothing better in the world than a Dr Pepper with a YC's. Maybe not. May, I, I, as far as I can tell, there's not many things. It's in the top ten. I, I I've never experienced such a such a it's beautiful a, it's dream. A, it's, it's, it's an amazing dream. Okay. And I was at YC's, and I said no. Okay. I, I didn't water. even know that's something I wanted until now. <laughs> I wanted. <laughs> anyway, watch this clip. That purpose is revealed through movement. That when we move in life, right, purpose is revealed to you and I. And I like to see, I think God gave me this picture, that our lives are be like a river. That a river just goes and it moves through. And when it moves, like it's, it's cutting into the unmovable, the, the unshapeable stuff. You make the Grand Canyon by just continuing to move. The things that seem impossible, I just keep moving through it. And I bring beauty and I bring change. 
and I bring life wherever I go. I walk into Walmart, and I like to think that I bring a little bit of life wherever I go. I'm like water that is just moving through, and as I move through life, my purpose is revealed moment by moment, step by step. But that same water that's made, meant to bring life, that if it stops moving, it becomes stagnant, becomes cloudy, comes right. It's supposed to bring beauty, but now it begins to smell, it gets polluted, until ultimately it just evaporates in a way it's gone. And that's not what our life is meant to be. It's not a life that's meant to be stagnant, not moving, just cloudy, stinky life that one day evaporates and the way you go and that was your life. I was meant to bring life wherever I go to make a difference, to make a change. That generations, thousands of years from now, people will still be able to see some of the marks that you and I have left on this earth that we truly made a difference. Is there anybody out there? Can we get an amen today? Come on, you're a loud service normally. Where are you at? I'm a jacuzzi guy. It sounds creepy when I say it out loud, but I am. I do. I love my jacuzzi. I, like, I get my jacuzzi every single night. I get out there. And a few weeks ago, I went out to get the jacuzzi, and I was getting in it. That thing smelt. It was like cloudy, and it was like kind of musty. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, right? And so I still got in. And so <laughs> I'm a jacuzzi guy. <laughs> still got a little bit of tan from it, too. And so that's nice. Come to find out the pump had uh, stopped working. The water had stopped moving. And then, then it got all nasty. Now we got the pump fixed. But you know what I didn't do is I didn't put new water in. Didn't have to put new water in. Didn't have to empty it out and get it all. I just had to get the water moving. And that's for some of you out there that feel like in your life, like I haven't moved faster. I haven't done anything in my life. I'm 50 years old, right? My life has been stagnant. And here's what's exciting is it doesn't matter how stagnant you are, if you start moving today, you once again bring life, you bring change, you begin to make a difference in your world. <laughs> Anytime, it doesn't matter. You could be 100 years old, I don't care what your age is, 100 years old, and you can start making a difference that lasts for a long time today. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, be in church this weekend, and uh, wherever your church is, be important. Don't forget about the marriage conference coming up March 1st, if you're around the area. It's a marriage event, and uh, they say that marriages that go to church uh, once a week and go to one marriage event a year, they're like 98% successful. That's, that's just fact. Yeah. So I encourage you, go to it, learn, grow, and uh, see you tomorrow.